Hadith 13 Love for your brother what you love for yourself. عن أبي حمزة أنس ابن مالك رضي الله عنه خادم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه رواه البخاري ومسلم Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, the servant of the messenger, narrates that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, None of you will believe until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. In today's hadith, we're going to be talking about loving for your brother what you love for yourself. This is an extremely concept, uh, important concept that we have in Islam. It's really the golden rule of Islam. Um, when you think about loving for your brother what you love for yourself, in concept it sounds really easy. But in reality, so many diseases of the heart can get in the way. And one of the biggest ones is jealousy. And that's one of the main uh, points that we want to focus on today, is how to deal with jealousy and how to be able to overcome it so that we can love for our brothers what we love for ourselves. And just taking a step back, when we talk about our brother, we talk about our Muslim brother or sister in Islam, um, that we really want, wish for them the best just as we wish for ourselves the best, we wish for other people the best as well. Um, how can we avoid jealousy so that we really can accomplish this wonderful feat? One of the ways in which we can do this is to remember Allah. Think in English the way that Allah is spelled. A-L-L-A-H. Take the first three letters and it's all. If you remember that Allah has it all, you truly will never be jealous of anybody. Why? Because you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give everybody everything. It's only upon his will what he will give to whom. So this is really important when we think about um, overcoming jealousy. Secondly, it's important to remember the, the essence of ithar, and this is really preferring someone else um, over you. Um, in Surah Al-Hashr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning those people of Medina, when people of, uh, the people of Ansar, when the people of the Muhajirun, when they came from Mecca, they didn't have anything. And subhanAllah, the people of Medina were so moved by the concept that the, that the Muhajirun left everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to come to Medina and they welcomed them with all of their worldly possessions. Here in, uh, in Surah Al-Hashr, verse number 9, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ تَبَوَّأُوا الدَّارَ وَالْإِيمَانَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ يُحِبُّونَ مَنْ هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ يحبون من هاجر إليهم ولا يجدون في صدورهم حاجة مما أوتوا ويؤثرون ويؤثرون على أنفسهم ولو كان بهم خصاصة وَمَنْ يُوقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Indeed, this word shuh here, whoever is able to break this shuh, which is very strong miserliness, whoever is able to break it, then indeed he will be successful. If we can focus on this ayah for a moment and think about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is stressing the importance of this concept, then we would really want to strive towards it. This will be something that we wish to accomplish. Going back to overcoming jealousy, what are some practical steps that we can do to, uh, to accomplish this? First, we have to think about how can we be happy with what we have, and this is the concept of Rida. Oftentimes in this society, you know, there's this common saying, competing with the Joneses. You look at Mr. and Mrs. Jones next door and you say, they have a boat, well, I want to have a boat. They have a new white picket fence, well, I want to have a white picket fence. But in Islam, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful. He sent Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as, um, as a guide for all of us. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, peace and blessings be upon him. He said, I'm paraphrasing his hadith, that look at those who are less fortunate than you, not those that are above you. So people who are more ill, people who do not have as many worldly possessions, people who have lesser in family, if you look at their situation, you will begin to feel for them and you will realize how much you have. And when we talk about people who are less fortunate than you, we're not saying that they're less than you in any type of way in terms of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how, how Allah views them. It is merely that in this life, perhaps they have more struggle, they have less worldly possessions, perhaps they have less health. So if you understand those people's situations and their plight, 
you will be very content with what you have. And this is an important concept. If we just stick to this, we can be happier people and we will be more readily able to wish for other people more than even what we wish for ourselves. A second way that we can overcome this concept of jealousy that oftentimes get in this, gets in the way of ithar is to not obsess with other people's social media pages. Social media pages, and this sounds kind of funny, but I have, wallahi, I have uh, several uh, friends that have come to me and said, you know what, I've given up uh, Facebook for a while, I've given up Instagram. Why? Just because the constant pictures that people take of their happy vacations, of their happy meals, of their happy new outfits, of their happy new wedding, expensive cars, this and that. Um, Alhamdulillah, they're fantastic, but sometimes when you just see constantly over and over pictures of the best of what people have, it may open the door to a disease that you may have in your heart. So if one is ill, why go to a place full of disease? Um, the best way to protect ourselves is really avoid this type of situation and, and number one, understand that of course people are going to post their most happiest and memorable pictures. So to understand that there's a lot of history and stories behind it. Um, there may be some sad times, there may have been struggle to attain some of those things. And then secondly, like I said, not to spend hours, uh, uh, literally hours, on people's uh, just roaming through social media pages and looking at what people have. It's, a, it's not only um, perhaps not the best use of your time, but it really can lead to thinking about all the things that you don't have. So, SubhanAllah, once we overcome this concept, which um, if we really be honest with ourselves, I think a lot of us struggle with this from time to time, then truly when we learn that somebody is about to get married and we've been struggling for years to get married, or someone's had their fifth child and we have struggling to even have the first child, you will truly be happy for them because you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives and he takes. It's not because of their own success or because they're so wonderful. Um, it is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed it for them. And this is your chance when you hear good news to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you the same uh, um, as well. There's, there's nothing wrong with asking to have what somebody else has as long as we don't have the disease in our hearts where we're jealous and we don't want that other person to have success or to have the wonderful things in this life. So when we, um, when we do this, we will really be able to trust one another. We will truly be happy with, um, with our fellow Muslims. We'll be able to trust them because we know they're not having all of these ill thoughts when we tell them good news. And um, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this with this um, concept of ithar, of loving for our brothers what we love for ourselves in this month of Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum.